Hey peeps, it's Sophie here from Disrupt Tutoring and as always, it's such a pleasure to join you. Today we're dealing with the 2018 grade 12 paper in physical science and these are the MCQ questions. Okay, let's get started. So question 1 says, 1.1 says, inertia is the tendency of an object to either maintain its mass, continue in a state of uniform mo of non-uniform motion, remains at rest or in a state of uniform motion and maintain its velocity when a non-zero net force is acting on it. So we know the answer to that is C because that's just Newton's first law which explains inertia. So an object remains in re at rest or in a state of uniform motion, that's inertia. Okay, 1.2 says a person stands on a bathroom scale that is fixed to the floor of a lift as shown in the diagram below. So it's given you little diagram and it shows that the person is on a scale. So it says the reading on the scale is largest when the lift moves and it gives us options. So remember that weight is always going to increase um, relatively when the lift is moving upwards and decrease when it's moving downwards but it has to be accelerating because if it's accelerating it means there's a resultant force. So that would make the answer C. It, the reading of the scale is largest when it's traveling upwards at an increasing speed because that means it's accelerating. Great. 1.3 says an object is projected vertically upwards. In, ignore air resistance. As the object rises, its velocity... Okay, so if we think of an object um, that's just been thrown, the only force on it is the force of gravity. So force of gravity or its weight. So it says the velocity either and acceleration are both directed upwards and acceleration are both directed downwards. The velocity is directed upwards but the acceleration is directed downwards or the velocity is downwards but the acceleration is upwards. So we know that this is C because the velocity, the, the object may have been thrown upwards, so its velocity is still going upwards, but its acceleration, it's, it's kind of the G force is still downwards. So we know that that answer is C as well. Okay, moving on to the next one. It says a ball P and ball Q of the same mass are dropped onto a concrete floor. Both balls hit the concrete floor at the same speed, V. Ball P rebounds with the same vertical speed V, but ball Q rebounds with a speed of a half V. So now they want us to choose the correct statement of both of these, and these options are either that kinetic energy is conserved for both balls P and Q, the change of momentum of ball P is greater than Q, the contact time with the floor is the same for both balls, or momentum is conserved for the collision of ball P but not of ball Q. Okay, so they are changing directions. That's what we know so far. So it's probably going to be some sort of energy problem um, and to do with elastic or inelastic collisions and all of those things. So we, if we take ball P, it's going down before with a velocity of V and then it rebounds with a velocity of V going upwards. So what it basically does, oh, helicopter, not sure if you can hear that. <laughs> so what it basically does is that it, it basically experiences 2V change in momentum. So um, that experiences an overall larger momentum than let's say Q, which comes down with the velocity of V and up with a velocity of half V only. Okay, so the answer to 1.4 is therefore B. Because this momentum is greater than this. Okay, cool. So 1.5 says, if the net work done on a moving object is positive, then we can conclude that the kinetic energy of the object is... Okay, so... The net work done on an object is positive. What does that mean? That means that, you know, the work that you're doing, that F change in X is positive, which means that it's moving. And we know that work is, that is proportional to kinetic energy. So as work, as net work is positive, 
the kinetic energy increases. So that is B. Okay. For 1.6, it says the spectrum produced by a moving as asteroid as observed from Earth indicates that the light has shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum. Which one of the following frequency combinations is of the observed light and the distance between the asteroid and Earth is correct? So they've shown that, well, they know that the frequency of light, um, well, rather the color of the light has shifted towards blue as it comes closer to the Earth. So what we can deduce from that is that because it's turning blue as it's approaching Earth, and we know that blue is a higher frequency, we know that the answer is then A, because it's coming closer to Earth and its color is changing to a higher frequency. So that's A. Great, next one. Okay, 1.7 gives us three charges, X, Y, and Z. And they tell us that it, sphere X is negatively charged and that sphere X attracts Y but repels sphere Z. So we know that if it attracts Y, then Y has to have a net positive charge. And Z, because it repels, it has to have a negative charge. Yeah, this is a plus, not a four. Okay, so what can we say then? Then we can say that, okay, so we know then that sphere Y is positively charged and sphere Z is negatively charged. That's, that's kind of a simple one there. Great. Okay, 1.8. Let's have a look at this one. So in the circuit diagrams below, the cells and resistors are identical. So that means that the resistances are identical of all of them. The cells have negligible internal resistance. Okay, cool. So now it says the power dissipated in the resistor X is P and the power dissipated in resistor Y is something. Okay, so if we find power in terms of some variable for let's say the first circuit. So if I draw that circuit out here, okay, and we know that this is X, we know that there's some current traveling through here and that power is equal to the current squared times resistance. Okay, so if then we solve for, let's say, well, actually, there's our expression for power for the first one. So then if we draw the second one, we've got a cell and then we've got these two resistors, but in parallel. And this is resistor Y. Then we know this current splits into these two, but we know that because the resistors are equal, the currents are going to split evenly. So the current that's going into both of them is a half of the current that went in. Okay, cool. So then if we just do the power formula, but we do it in terms of the previous one, we know that now our I going into resistor Y is a half of what the other one was. So we can say it's a half I squared, all squared, remember, and then just times R because the resistance is the same. Okay. And then we can find out that this is a quarter I squared R. And we know that this is the power in that circuit. So we then know that 4P is equal to I squared R. And we know that this I squared R is equal to this. That's for circuit one. So then our answer is 4P. So that's D. Great. So it's just equating left-hand sides and right-hand sides. Okay, moving on to 1.9. It asks, which one of the following actions will not cause an increase in the induced EMF in a coil if the coil is rotated in a uniform magnetic field? Okay, so if we look at the EMF formula, they, they've given us um, a lot of factors that we could probably find in the formula. So let's Let's write it out. So we know that EMF is equal to minus N and then the change in magnetic flux over time. Okay, so let's look at the options they've given us. They've, they've given us either rotating the coil faster, 
Now that relates to the time portion because if you rotate it faster, your change in time is going to be influenced because your number of turns is going to be different. Okay, increasing strength of the magnetic field, that comes from your flux term. That's, that's the B when you're working out your magnetic flux. And then the number of turns of the coil is this N term. N term. It's um, how many times the coil is wrapped around the you know, the coil. And then the last one says replacing the coil with a coil of lower resistance. Now, nowhere in that formula is there any resistance term. So we know that that is not going to have any increase. That's not going to cause any increase in the induced EMF. So the answer is D. Okay, last one. It says a learner writes the following statement about emission spectrum of light in a notebook. Okay, these are the three statements. An emission spectrum is formed when a certain frequency of electromagnetic radiation passes through a cold gas. The lines in the emission spectrum of an atom have the same frequency as the corresponding lines in the atom's absorption spectrum. And an emission spectrum is formed when an atom makes the transition from a high energy state to a lower energy state. Okay, so this is more of a theory question, but we know that Definitely two and definitely three are correct. And the reason that it, that number one isn't correct is because it's not through a cold gas. It's through a, either a prism or any of those kinds of things. It doesn't really have any effect if it's through a cold gas. So there you go. That's C. Okay, so that's it for this question. But before I go, I'd like to say a very special thank you to our Epic sponsor for making this video possible. You can read all about them in the description below. Also be sure to visit our website for more of these epic tutorial videos. If you can't find the answer to your question, you can send us the question and we'll respond with a personalized video just for you. But until next time, stay epic.